consciousness itself. They're simply the contents which can come and go depending on the state of consciousness that we're in or the object or contents of consciousness. But the consciousness remains eternally. Why? Because we're living entities, we're spirit souls. And the eternal spirit soul, his main uh, symptom is this consciousness. So consciousness is always going to be there, whether it has objects or no objects, or regardless of what the quality of the objects are. And who is it that has to experience the uh, results or the, uh, the contents of this consciousness? It is us, the living entity. Therefore, we want to make sure that the quality and contents of our consciousness are the best possible so that we have the best, most uh, beautiful, richest experience of life possible. And this is what Krishna is giving us in Bhagavad Gita. He's saying there are three modes of material nature, ignorance, passion, and goodness. And then there's transcendental realm, the fourth uh, above that. And so if we fill our consciousness with these material things, goodness, passion, and ignorance, then these qualities will always be changing. One will try to become prominent, and then another one will try to become, kick that one out and become prominent, and then another one. And there's always this struggle, always this turmoil, never any peace in the mind. But when we attain the spiritual platform of consciousness, then everything is permanent, everything is real, unchanging, eternal. And we never have to uh, change the contents of our consciousness. Just like Krishna is always God. And never was there a time when he wasn't God. And never in the future shall be there a time when he's not God. He's always God. So once we come to consciousness of Krishna, Krishna consciousness, and we never have to change that. We never have to go study another, after Bhagavad Gita, oh, there's going to be another book that tells us something different. No. No. Bhagavad Gita is eternal. It was spoken hundreds of millions of years ago to the sun god. And it will be spoken hundreds of millions of years from now in some other situation, on some other planet. Who knows? We, we don't have that information. But we know that the truths of Bhagavad Gita are eternal and that they're always given by uh, Sri Krishna whenever he speaks. So what, what is the actual definition of religion? Dharma hi saksha tu Bhagavat pranita. Dharma is whatever Krishna says. Krishna is the words of God. Uh, it's just like the, the Vedas come from the breathing of Mahavishnu. Therefore, the Vedas are eternal. And this is one of the problems with understanding the Vedas, is that they are eternal. So they contain instruction for all the four yugas, all the four divisions of time. Uh, in Satya Yuga, self-realization was attained by meditation. Renunciation. People would go out in the woods and just sit for thousands of years and meditate. In Dvapara Yuga, by uh, deity worship, puja, temple worship. In Treta Yuga, by sacrifice. Huh? Huge sacrifices. The kings would, would spend millions and millions of dollars uh, worth of gold paraphernalia and food, and they would, they would make these huge arenas bring all the citizens there, even the cats and dogs and animals would come to these sacrifices. And everyone would see the demigods appear because of the chanting of the mantras by qualified brahmanas. Uh, but not in Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, none of these uh, processes will work. We don't have the qualified brahmanas. We don't have the wealth uh, for these sacrifices. We don't have the requisite knowledge to perform Vedic sacrifices uh, properly and successfully. Uh, therefore, the only sacrifice that's mentioned in the Vedas for Kali Yuga is this Sankirtan Jagna, means chanting the holy name of God in an assembly together, Sankirtan, together chanting. Harer Nama, Harer Nama, Harer Nama Eva Kevala, Kalao Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyata. In this age of Kali, there's no other way to attain self-realization and enlightenment except to chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name. Why? Three times repeated. This is from Kali Santara Upanishad. 
Okay, so by, by quoting from Upanishad, this is final. You have to accept. Huh? There's no argument, it, it, and it's right on the subject matter. There's no, there's no uh, interpretation required. Not an allegory, not a metaphor. It's direct instruction. Huh? In Kali Yuga, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. The name of God. Why three times? Well, one thing is to make it conclusive. And the other thing is that there are three stages in the chanting of Hare Krishna or Hare Nama. One is the offensive stage, where a person is committing offenses. They don't know what these offenses are because of ignorance. But they're chanting somehow or other, so then they get to the next stage, which is the clearing stage. In the clearing stage, you're under the guidance of a spiritual master who is giving you knowledge what these ten offenses are. And therefore you're striving to overcome them and get to the point where all your anartas, the unwanted things, go away. And then Harinama in the third stage is a perfectional stage. And this is the stage where you realize that the holy name and the Lord himself are identical. They're identical, qualitatively identical. So as soon as you chant the holy name, Krishna is there. Krishna is always there. It's just that we don't know it. But as soon as we chant the holy name without offenses, then we realize it. Oh, Krishna is there. And then we can have a nice relationship with him. Uh, and then why is it also three times, nasjeva, nasjeva, nasjeva. No other way, no other way, no other That means not... No other way by yoga, meditation. No other way by opulent deity worship, because nobody can afford to do it, nobody knows how. Three, no other way by uh, Jyotir, I mean, sorry, by uh, Agni, Hotra, Homa, and uh, different yagnas, uh, especially demigod worship and things like that. This, this, this doesn't work in Kali Yuga. Nobody can do it right. In the Vedic days, they would uh, make the sacred fire. The four brahmanas would sit around and chant the Vedic hymns. Then they would bring an old horse or an old cow. Huh? And they would throw them in the fire. And they would make these huge fires. I mean, just enormous. 10, 15, 20 feet on a side, just blazing. You know, fire. And they would throw the animal in the fire. And then they would chant the mantras and the animal would come out of the fire rejuvenated, youthful, brand new. And that was the test, just to see if they had established the sacred fire properly. Nobody can do that now. Nobody can do it. So what do they do now? They start the fire and they throw the animal and cook it. <laughs> Welcome to Kali Yuga. Okay, that's why Buddha came. Buddha came to stop this. This was going on in India, people were sacrificing animals and cooking and eating in the name of Vedic Jagya. So Buddha came to stop that. And in the process he had to reject Vedas. But he taught Ahimsa. Now, next stage is Shankaracharya came. And Shankara taught impersonal. Thing. Oh, when you become self-realized, you merge into God. You merge into Brahman. Right? Even though this teaching is not given anywhere in Shastra, he said, Vyasadeva made a mistake. And he, mis he misinterprets, you know. So the original commentary on Vedanta is Srimad Bhagavatam, or Bhagavat Purana. But Shankaracharya made his own commentary, Shariraka Bhasya. And in Shariraka Bhasya, he says, no, actually, Vyasadeva made a mistake. Actually, it's like this and like that. He made his own comment, his own interpretation. But wait a minute. He's saying that Vyasadeva made a mistake in Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, Upanishads should be interpreted in a different way. But who wrote Upanishads? The same Vyas. Same Vyas he wrote Upanishads. His Bhagavatam is to be rejected. Well, wait a minute. That means you're basing your teaching on a scripture that you say the author made a mistake. So if the author made a mistake, why are you basing your teaching on that Shastra? It's a short circuit, you see? Short circuit. The teaching contradicts itself. Shariya Kabasya. 
It says, let's, let's base this teaching on Upanishads. And then we say, no, Vyasadeva made a mistake. The soul is not personal. So they reject Srimad Bhagavatam and other Puranas. But wait a minute, the same Vyasadeva who wrote the Puranas also wrote Upanishads. They seem not to have noticed that. So the whole thing is self-contradictory. And at the end of his life, Shankaracharya said, Bhajagovindam, 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 Mudha Mate. Huh? Mudha. You're all Mudha. You're trying to come to the truth using grammatical affixes and suffixes. Huh? Grammar, Vyakarana. This is not going to be the way to truth. You fools, Bhajagovinda, Bhajagovinda, Bhajagovinda. That was his last statement before he jumped into 